folks, welcome to another episode of our podcast. We were thinking about the name, but uh, I thought about the Rainmaker again, but there's no rain in Vegas, so that's probably <laughs> not gonna fly. Uh, yeah. So I'll just stick to the Polish name, which is uh, Life Without Grucha. So it's like uh, Życie bez Gruchy, we'll stick with that, because that's been kind of like a sign uh, that pe people recognize us by. Nice. So I'll explain what that is, but that's for you as a guest. Okay, thank I you. I give it to every guest. That's it. That's a, that's a sticker. No gruha sticker. That means that no you're ambitious. You're engaged in what you're doing. Okay. And you're focused on results. Okay. That's the culture that I like we, that. that, that uh, we live by. And so today we have um, a very special guest from Eastern Europe and from totally different sector than uh, we are in and then the people that we're inviting usually. It's a second lady that that uh, that we have on our podcast. And uh, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. And uh, and the, the best thing is that we probably understand a lot about uh, each other because of mm -hmm. our cultures. Mm -hmm. So you, um, Nicolina, Nicolina, right? yes. Nicolina, welcome yes. to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. This is amazing. I'm so excited right now. It's such beautiful weather. I'm driving a Porsche. It's my first time or Porsche, right? I, I was listening Se to Sergio. Sergio was saying Porsche. He gave us a lesson on, on how to say Porsche or Porsche or Porsche, Porsche. So I'm driving it right now and I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. Thank you very much. You, I said that you're in a totally different sector. Yes. And that is because you're in the makeup space mm -hmm. in a different sector, not to not dissimilar to like what uh, women are interested in, but dissimilar to what we're in, which is technology most of the time. Okay. But what, what, what is similar is not only our cultures, but also business and the business acumen that I've, I, I did some homework before and then, and I, I know that you're very ambitious. Yes. You came from similar kind of region. Where, where yes. are you from originally in Europe? I'm originally from Serbia, East Europe. If uh, people always think it's Russia, obviously it's not Russia. It's East Europe, Serbia, next to Bulgaria, next to Macedonia, next to Romania, Hungary, Croatia, or like I like to say, former Yugoslavia. A lot of people know what Yugoslavia is, right? So um, that area. And I think in people in America, when I tell them where is Poland, they're like, oh, it's Europe. Yeah, it's Europe. It's Europe. Yeah, <laughs> th that's it. So yeah, I came here eight years ago, 2013. I cannot believe it's been eight years already. It's crazy. And uh, yeah, I came straight to Vegas, straight to Vegas. I didn't choose any other city, I chose Vegas right away. And you are now a professional makeup artist. Yes. And your company is called? Glam Sophisticated Makeup Academy. So I've been a professional makeup artist since 2015, so six years. That's when I kind of started doing um, everything in the, in the beauty world. And two years ago, I started teaching makeup. And a year ago, I opened my makeup academy here in Las Vegas on Las Vegas Boulevard, which I'm so proud of. And now I'm focusing mostly on teaching. I don't do makeup as much, like makeup appointments. I'm mostly focusing on teaching and helping others um, open their own businesses and also help them start in the makeup field without having to spend tens of thousands of dollars or months of their time on education to, um, to get into the, into the field. But you didn't just come come in here and then they they, they kind of gave you this role on the silver no, platter like no. hey nicolina <laughs> no that it was very hard it was very tough it was very tough and especially coming here as an immigrant i didn't have any family i came with just a couple of friends here to america and i didn't really have i didn't know anyone did you I, plan it no i didn't plan it it was very random a friend of mine he was like hey let's go to america because we have these j1 visas i'm sure you're familiar with that concept okay where students in Europe, um, I don't know if other countries and other states too, but Europe mostly that I know of, they get an opportunity to come to America and work and travel for about five to six months over summer break. Mm -hmm. And um, and we get social securities, which are kind of limited. And we also get like work permits, again, limited only for about five to six months. We got connected with employers here in Vegas and um, they also find us apartments and accommodation. And that's how we came. It's kind of like an agency does that for you. So that's how I came with some friends here and I didn't plan it whatsoever. And the city we chose, literally it was like, okay, do you wanna go here? Or do you wanna go there? Literally, it was that. And I saw Las Vegas on the list and I was like, I wanna go to Las Vegas, sounds fun. And a friend of mine helped me kind of get, um, you know, signed up and all that with the agency and that's how I wind up in Vegas. I didn't even plan to stay. It was supposed to be a five to six month program, but I decided to stay. I didn't, I missed my flight. I had a flight, I remember it was like 13th of October, 2013. Did you I, miss it or you wanted to miss it? I wanted to miss it. I plainly missed it, right? Uh, 
I remember they even called me in the morning like, hey, just want to make sure you're coming to the flight. I was like, nope, I'm not coming to the so flight. So you obviously you liked America yes. comparing to what you yes. did experience back in Europe. Exactly. So what, tell me briefly, because most of the people know what are the differences, but what were the differences between European mentality? Because we have a lot of European people <coughs> listening. Yes. Uh -huh. What's the difference between the European mentality and the mentality here in the US? Um, the difference, well, we love to hang out. We love to. We, we love that social life, right? Europeans, we love that social life. We, we are very bonded with family. We we're very, you know, or family oriented as well. Um, we like to go out. We like to party. We like to, you know, we work hard as well. Like we work very, very hard. Um, when it comes to American mentality, for me, I guess it's a little bit more. Like they like their own space. That's something I noticed. American culture likes their own space. They don't like to share a lot. Um, they're not as close, not all of them obviously, but a lot of people are not as close to maybe their families and friends as we are. In Serbia also, you know, like a lot of people live with their fa uh, family until they're 30 years old. So it's a little bit different than here, I guess. Um, which some things I like here a lot, like for example, when you turn 18, a lot of parents say, hey, you're either gonna find a job or you're gonna pay a rent in my house, right? We don't do that in Europe. Like a lot of people are still babe, like their parents kind of babysit them till they're like 25 to 30, sometimes even longer. Um, and that's, a, I guess, a very big um, difference between America and, and Europe. Mm -hmm. So you missed your flight. Yes. <laughs> You're, uh, you've been here for the for six months, kind of? Yes, so I came in May And what about your, uh, yeah. let's, let's talk about uh, immigration and okay. let, let's talk about uh, visa because I'm in the process right now. So okay. if um, anybody from immigration is watching that, I'm legally in the process. <laughs> Amen. Right? Um, <laughs> FYI. Uh, but but um, with, with, uh, I can neither uh, confirm, uh, I, can, um, I, I cannot confirm uh, nor deny what's the, the situation with you. I heard you had some stories with that. Yes. So briefly, if you could give us, uh, yes, you know, was, so, it, was it hard work? Was it like difficult to go? Well, it was difficult in the beginning, you know, not having papers, not having any family, not knowing anyone. You literally come, I was 21 when I came. Um, Did they give you money? My parents, I came with $700, $700 okay. in a suitcase. That was it. So, and I had a job already here. So, we, you know, through that agency, they already established us a job. So I had a job in okay. Caesar Palace. I was working as a, as a bartender in one of the bars. So um, we had a job, but we lost the job or they kind of laid us off already like three months in. So after that, it was very hard to find a job, not having papers, not having insurance, not having a driving, a driving license. I had this driving license. It was like a Serbian driving license. It was like a piece of paper, literally. I was driving with that four years. So till 2017 was when I actually got my paper. So four years, I was an immigrant, literally didn't have any paper to my name. I didn't have any um, work permit, nothing. And I was just trying to figure it out. In the meantime, I managed to go to school with no papers too. Wow. I managed Were to get you scared? A, I was very like, I was risking. I, I was like, I don't have nothing to risk. I literally don't have nothing. I was broke. I didn't have nothing to risk. So I was like, let me try it out. So I went with a friend. We went to Seattle because in Seattle, they still give IDs, uh, visa, not visas, but IDs and like uh, paper, mm -hmm. kind of like a permits. Uh, for people who don't have any papers, like anything, literally. Gotcha. They're kind of like um, a safe state or how they call it, like a state for... Social kind of. Yeah. So we went there, literally last $300 I had, and my friend actually borrowed me some money so we can go to Seattle to get some ID. So we have some type of um, document, right? Because anything you want to do here, you need it, some type of ID. So we got an ID and with that ID, and I had a social security that was my social security that I came to America with, but it was only uh, with work permit. It was working only with work permit, which my work permit expired, but a lot of people don't know that or didn't know that when they were hiring me. So they were like, oh, okay, you have an ID, you have a social, right? right. They didn't really do the background checks, thankful, thankfully. So I managed to go to school. I managed to even get a job in corporate. I don't even know how I did that. Um, and I managed to, to just start working on my own business. That's how I became a makeup artist, freelance makeup artist, because I was like, I don't want to depend on anyone else. I don't want to have to depend on someone else giving you me a job or not. Like being here, that you saw people are way, like, you know, willing to take risks and uh, um, and then a lot of people are an not. For that? I think that Americans are very, they play by the rules. Yeah. I don't, 
I don't want to say everyone is like that, but, but I think is, everyone... But the society kind of is more yes. risk uh, to, to like to open a business and then put yes. money in there and they will throw money, let's say, on exactly. a project. Exactly. And everyone here works by rules. And I like that here. I like that everything is established. There's laws, there's rules and people follow that. And if not, there are guns. They're gone, you know, and in Europe, you know, in Europe, anything can slide. There is so many things and that's how, like, that's how I start, I guess. And even with my parents, you know, they will always kind of teach me, like, find a way. Don't find an excuse, find a way. And I found a way, you know, and that's something I, I always, I always, I guess my motto, I guess. Don't try to find a reason why not to, find a way to do something. So everything I did, I was just figuring it out, finding a way trying it out see if it works if it, if i don't if it doesn't work if i get a no i'm gonna move on and do something else so i guess that was something that i i was always led by i guess mm -hmm. and uh, i listened to your podcast with the lady forgot her name sorry but okay. she she you, you you told the story where you started kind of working um, uh, at a kind of beauty salon or beauty spa? Yes, mm -hmm. that was my first beauty job here in Vegas. I got a job um, at the front desk in a medical, it was like a, not really a medical spa, it was a spa. Um, and I got a job over the weekend, so I was working in an Indian restaurant at that time, and I got a job over the weekend because I needed more money, I needed to, to you know, pick up extra work. So I got a job in, a, in that spa, and that spa was something that I'm gonna move so lanes. You had a tikka masala job. <laughs> That's how I love Indian food. Um, and then I got a job in, the, in that medical spa over the weekend, and that's when I realized that beauty here, people actually make so much money here on services. Mm -hmm. Not, It's not like that. Like People still make good money in Europe, but you don't charge as much money as you do here, right? Um, and also, I've noticed like girls were so pretty, and they were just like, they would go, you know, come to work, looking nice, smelling nice, obviously working with beautiful women, and then leave home and like smell nice. Versus I would go to Indian restaurant, I would come home smelling like curry and I would be dirty with curry so all over me. So was that your motivation to smell and nice? And that was like, that was not really to smell nice, but just like I, I noticed like, okay, there's a different industry in Vegas. If you besides... smell nice, you probably get more money. <laughs> but it's not everywhere. Like actually, you know what? It's not, uh... it's not true. You know, it's not just because you smell nice, yeah, obviously, yeah, but so because it's a, it's a, it's a nice job. It, you know, it's a nice environment. You know, and it's so loud right now with all these trucks. Yeah. Um, and you tell me if you want to go off the strip a little bit too. Um, so then I realized then that there is more than just hospitality industry. Even though that was something I was studying back in Europe, I was studying tourism and hotel management. That was my major. But you did also study. I listened that you studied some. Uh, Something related to like uh, um, what what was it called? Yeah, aesthetics. Yes, that's that's when I came was here. It here. So before I started studying through aesthetics, that's how I you know started thinking about okay, beauty is such a beautiful job. I could actually do that here. Um, you know, in Serbia before beauty industry was more like a side hustle, I guess, or that's how I was looking at it. Versus here, it's an actual business. Now, of course, more in Europe, uh, more treatments and more different kinds of stuff it's, it's happening as well and different different kinds of kind of treatments but back then i didn't see it as a as an option to to have a business um in europe it was very like you know what are you going to study you're going to be a doctor you're going to be a lawyer you know like that's the only business you think of uh, that you want to be and i wanted to be a tourist guide so totally random anyways when i came here and I, when i got a job in the spa then i realized that i really wanted to do something in beauty i didn't know what at the time i just knew makeup was always my passion but i was like you know what let me ask more questions so i asked the girls i was like hey what school did you go to they're like well we went to esthetician school cosmetology school yeah. we got licensed that's how now we work in a spa doing you know facials and treatments and all that and that's when i realized well okay let me let me look into that right so i looked into that and I remember I went to consultation to one of the schools and then uh, they told me they were like, well, it's going to be $14,000 for this. And I'm like, broke as hell. I don't even know where yeah, I get the money. Education is very, very expensive. Uh, very expensive. $14,000 for nine month program, right? So I was like, okay, you know, maybe we, I can do something like that, I guess. Do you want to go in town square? It's a little more chill. Well, if it's kind of quieter there and uh, there's maybe not, can, not much yeah. noise, Let's, then... Uh, let me take you where I work. This is where I work. This is my uh, my office. That's is here. your area here. My office is here. Yes. Okay. Um, That's why you were you were you were saying. Uh, yes, it's yeah. a little more quieter too. So then, um, where was I now? So you said um, about like uh, the studies that they're so expensive. Yes. And because of that, you you found a problem. Yes. So then I 
was like, okay, how do I find the money? So actually in the meantime, I had an accident. Someone hit me from the back when I was with a friend in a car. And that whole thing was going on for about Did a you year. Have insurance? Um, it was funny thing. I was renting a car from a friend and it was his insurance. Everything was okay. his. So actually he got paid really good chunk of money, but we also got paid personal injury, which okay. was, I got $10,000 and it was a perfect timing. And then part of that money I invested in my school. Mm -hmm. So that's how I kind of got it started. And I had half to pay off. Um, so then I was just paying it off cash as I was going to school because I couldn't apply for financial aid. Right. I didn't have papers, right? So I couldn't um, apply for any type of like scholarship or anything like that. So that's why I decided to do that. And I was paying it cash. Um, so I was just putting down as much as I could. And then I finally paid it off. I had to pay off before I graduate. And so I graduated in uh, 2016. And that's when I got into beauty. Actually, in the meantime, I started working at Macy's. I was doing, uh, working at a, as a, at a counter, fashion show mall here in Vegas. Okay. And uh, I was just working as, a, um, you know, selling makeup. And actually, that brought me a lot of um, lessons about sales. selling, sales. Um, I learned a lot about makeup as well, different products, different, you know, Were you engaged brands. always uh, at what you were doing? Because obviously, whatever you do, you can always learn something. But if you're doing something shit, most of the time you're with, you're with people, you're at the level of consciousness that you don't even understand that uh, you can take lessons from that. Yes, exactly, exactly. And that was a big lesson for me. And then in the meantime, I was doing, um, I started doing freelance makeup. So I was just freelancing on the side a little bit um, to make extra money. And that's when I realized that I actually love makeup. Like makeup was my passion and I don't really enjoy the facials as much or treatments or working in a spa or salon. I really enjoy the freelance, like being my own boss, right? Going, you know, traveling all over strip, um, just doing makeup appointments, like going to people's houses and people's hotel rooms. So that was pretty cool. And that's when I realized like, okay, that's, I want to make a business out of it. And finally, when I was in um, cosmetology school, end of my cosmetology school, we had this really cool um, project to kind of like write out like what we want to do one day, like kind of like a business plan, like mm -hmm. what kind of business we want to have. And my business plan was a makeup school. And finally, I'll, I'll, it's so funny, I can even show you this book. I have it at home. It was a makeup school. It was like, I put like ideas. I want to have a makeup school. I want to do like workshops and different classes. I want my makeup school to be on the strip. Literally, I have it in the book. That was 2015 when I wrote that. And then- so Six when I, years ago. Six years ago. And then when I opened my makeup academy, it clicked on me. I was like, wow, I actually manifested this. I journaled this. And it's crazy how like the power of journaling is so powerful. Yeah. Like it blows my mind. Everything I have put in that book, everything has happened to me. For because me. because most of the people they don't dream, they just wish. They, they just like, wish. Uh, exactly. And then if you don't have a dream, you can't make a dream come true. So exactly, so you know. I totally understand that. And and, uh, and now I have a makeup school on the Las Vegas Boulevard. It, it like literally two minutes from the strip, and it blows my mind that you know I actually very did central it. Location. But at the time, I didn't have the idea how I'm gonna do it. I didn't have any no idea. Connections. Nothing. I just knew it's gonna happen. You didn't one even day. have a like legal status. No, nothing. So, exactly. Exactly. So from from that position, uh, you're figuring out. Uh, are you making connections? Because I just showed you like the on on the on my like water bottle. Yes. I showed you like uh, the sticker. The more hands you shake. Yep. The, the more, more money, money you make. make. It's so true. It's so true. Partnerships, um, collaborations, um, working with other people, networking is what really makes us a successful business. And everyone knows that. And this is one of the but reasons. But people don't do it. So, but people don't do it. So look, for example, it's so easy to get on a, like, get, I, I came to this country five months ago. Okay. And Straight I could, from, Pol from Poland? Uh, well, I was in Poland, coincidentally, but, uh, okay. but that's because... I was selling off my investments there, so okay. I, I, I didn't. I don't have anything to do with Poland. I I lived in um, okay. in the UK for the last uh, seven years, okay, and I, yeah, you and I became that. a British citizen. So, um, and that's where I grew my business most of Very the time, cool. and that's where my business is still registered officially. Okay, okay. So, um, but I was in Poland because of COVID for a little bit, and then uh, you know the restrictions started, sort of became. Like it was the it was the peak of the pandemic. Okay. And then what do you do? You sit in Poland in a pretty much post-communistic country where they're freaking. My friends, uh, my clients, Jim got closed yesterday. They came in like with the police and, uh, and like the you know, um, uh, sanepid, which is like the sort of health department. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and uh, and they closed it down because, because of COVID. They're stupid. Like it's such a such a horrible. Europe is so socialistic, you know. So horrible. Um, and uh, so because of that, I decided that I need to, you know, make 
very, very difficult decisions. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do? Well, US was open. I knew it was kind of closed, but it was still open. People were doing business. So mm -hmm. what I do? I just book a ticket nice. and I go directly. But I cannot nice. go because there are restrictions and I have a business visa. Oh, okay, okay, so what okay, I did, okay, I went through Mexico. Okay. Two weeks oh, in Mexico, okay, okay, okay. quarantined there. And then they allowed and then me came. here. I had, nice. you know, I, I they, they took me this. But like, you see, you found a way. You didn't find an exactly. Excuse. So you when when you when you said that, you know, yes. I, I can hundred percent relate, exactly. and then I can relate to your story as well. Exactly. So that's why I um, uh, I see a lot of similarities. Yes. Also because of, of your culture. Yes. But the going back to you. You're, you're making your business, you know, plans, and then you're educating yourself. You're shaking hands. You're meeting people. Yeah. You're working on your craft, you're observing things, and you found a problem. The education yes. is expensive. Exactly. So not even so you're not exactly. in the makeup uh, space. Yes. Um, you're the edu like education. Well, it's still it's still a makeup space, right? I'm still in the beauty industry, makeup industry. Obviously, I teach, teach about makeup, but I found a purpose because I've realized that makeup appointments I can only serve so much. You know what I mean? I can only. Sir, it's with not scalable. my, it's it's not not a, yeah, it's not scalable. Um, I would have to obviously be there 24/7 in order to to do the makeup appointments if I want to really make. And my goal is to be a millionaire, billionaire one day. I'm not. I'm looking. I'm very like my ideas Think and big, very big. I'm. I was never you know satisfied with making 150 200 dollars per makeup appointment. Right. I, that was not enough for me. You know what I mean? Even though I was charge, I am still charging really good prices. It wasn't enough for me. I didn't see how many makeup appointments do I have to do in order to make $1 million, right? So I'm like, okay, what's the next thing I can do to really serve, serve people, help them, but also like take my business to the next level. And then that's how- Where did how, you learn all, all the entrepreneurial skills? Um, I didn't really that. learn anything on my own. Um, in a sense, I didn't really go to school, but my parents were always entrepreneurial. My okay. mom owns a flower shop. She owns three flower shops, actually. My dad, um, he has been in the real uh, real estate, not really the real estate industry, but he was uh, buying and selling a lot of properties as well. Mm -hmm. And not only that I was learning next to them, but they would always sit me down and, and tell me and talk to me and be like, hey, you have to be the one making the money. You have to be the one working. Don't depend on anyone else. If you want to make good money, if you want to be able to treat yourself, if you want to be able to travel, you have to be work hard. And I think that was always like, you know, when you're younger, you're like, oh, you know, parents again, they're talking about this again. But then when you grow up a little bit, especially when I came to America by myself, then I was like, okay, they were right. They were talking about things that really make, you know, actually, let's go this way, yeah. um, make make uh, make sense, right? So they were always teach me that. And my parents work so, so hard and they still work. My mom, I don't know anyone in Serbia that I know personally that works so hard as much as she does still in this age and time. And, 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 and I wanna help them too. I wanna bring them here one day. I wanna also have them, you know, be able to travel with me. So I think that that mentality- You wanna pay back? And also, not only that, seeing the opportunities that we have here. Mm -hmm. When you compare it, when you come to from Serbia, where everything is so corrupted, when you have to work so hard, if you want to pay the bills, you have to go stay in the line in the post office and pay the bills. Here we have auto pay. Like just simple stuff like that that already saves you so much time and money in the beginning, especially having a business, is like so important. And seeing those opportunities, it blows my mind that someone is born here in America, has a citizenship, has all the rights, has you know, is born into it. Into, into having everything here and still works, let's say, at McDonald's for $9 an hour. So that blows my mind. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity is someone can, that, that work here and, and lives here and has, like I said, paperwork. Oh, sure, they didn't see this lady. That has the, paper, the papers, that has insurance um, and has everything established, is, it's crazy to me. You know what I mean? And that's why I guess when seeing all those opportunities, I was hustling. Like I am still hustling so hard, like trying to make it work because I know it's possible. Everything that I have ever wanted to do, I made made a way to do it. And I feel like in Serbia, it would probably take me so much longer and it will be so much harder just because of the whole system. Everything is so outdated. Everything is so corrupted as well. By the way, this is my office here okay. um, on the second floor. Um, oh, we work. So you're at WeWork. Yes, I'm inside okay. of WeWork. Yeah. You should definitely come see me. It's a really cool place. Okay. Um, so you know what I mean? Like for me, seeing all that here is like there is nothing that can stop me from achieving my dreams. Literally nothing. All the opportunities, all the everything that we have here in America is like it's literally like you have to just sit and work. That's it. Yeah. You know, I, there's no excuses. Amen. There's no excuses. Absolutely. Literally. And so with all the opportunities, you took a chance. You you got your 10k from insurance, right? Yes. And uh, you invested in your education business mm -hmm. 
And then, so did you know immediately that you're gonna be teaching, or that just naturally no. came, came out of actually? Like, makeup so I was doing stuff. freelance makeup artistry since, two, since 2016 was when I really started like doing this full time when I quit my Macy's job. And since 2016, I never had another job. So this was just me doing this. Mm -hmm. um, are you gonna go? No. Okay. Um, and. And then in 2018, another school owner of some school that got closed down in the meantime, they were teaching uh, makeup, microblading, lashes and all that. She asked me, she found me on Instagram and she was like, hey, do you want to teach a makeup class for us? And I was like, you know what? Like this, there is a reason she's asked me, right? Even though I knew I want to do it one day, I still thought I'm not ready. So the lesson here is to listen to the feedback and then kind of plug into the loop what, uh, what's, what's market, what Marketplace is saying. Because um, you may you may want to do something in the right sort of direction. Yes. But uh, you you may be thinking that something is like probably what you're gonna provide marketplace, but marketplace is asking for something else. Well, I honestly, I didn't even know. I didn't even know what the market wants. Honestly, she just asked me to teach, like, come out with a curriculum and a program yeah, and then the program and teach. So I guess there was a reason for it, but I didn't see it that way. I just saw it. Oh, she wants to work with me. That's it. And then when I started working with her, I actually saw a lot of things that I didn't like. And I was like, okay, one day when I'm teaching, I'm gonna have it so completely different way. And then she got shut down in the meantime because she didn't have the licenses. Here in Las Vegas, if you wanna teach and certify people, especially as a, um, like a post-secondary education, you have to have a post-secondary educational license for that, mm -hmm. which she didn't have that. She got closed down in the meantime, and I started teaching from home because I had this built curriculum that I built for her. Thankfully, it was mine because I, I did it. Obviously, I created it. So I just took that and started teaching at home. The reason why I started teaching is because I noticed people were always asking me questions online on my Instagram. Hey, you know, I see you're successful. How did you open up your business? What brushes did you buy? Or, you know, what primer do I need to buy? How do I do this? How do I do that? And they were asking me questions. I was like, you know what? There is a reason for this. I need to continue educating. Even though she got shut down, I need to continue educating. So then I started teaching from home. I had this little small studio and I started teaching from there. And then the same That's lady, sure. thank you, I appreciate it. Funny thing is, she reached out to me because she saw me started teaching from home, right? I was doing it very low key because I really, like, I knew that I'm not really there yet to open up a school. And she saw me teaching um, online and she started texting me. She was like, well, just so you know, you know, <clears throat> they're going to close you down. They're going to fine you $10,000. You don't have the license to teach. So she's blah, scaring blah, you blah, off. Blah, like, blah, don't, she, don't do it. Don't, uh, don't take risks. <clears throat> exactly. Because she didn't, because she saw the potential I had, right? Yeah. And every time someone wanted me to fail, it pushed me to go to the next level and to really prove them even more. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, you'll see, now I'm gonna go and get my school license. So that was 2019, and I went to Post-Secondary Education Commission. I was like, hey, I wanna open up a school, what do I need? And they gave me, you have no idea. I felt like I'm opening a college. The amount of um, applications, the amount of documents, the amount of um, yeah, money, fees, you have no idea how much money I had to invest into my business. And that's a whole other story, right? And I was like, I'll do it. I'll pull it off. Somehow I'll do it. And when you put your mind into something like that, things just kind of click. Yeah. You know, people started booking me more for classes, started saving money on the side. I started investing in the, in the business license and all that. So 2019, I started the process in 2019, August. I got my school license in 2020, February. So eight, nine months took me to get my school license. And I worked so hard. My first time, my program got denied completely. And then my program got approved finally in February. And the reason why is because I've tried to prove them the concept of short, affordable education. They didn't see that. The Education Commission didn't see that whatsoever because they tried to compare me to other schools here in Vegas, other cosmetology schools, and there is one more makeup school here. And they all have programs which are seven, eight, nine months long, and they cost like $20,000. And I really wanted to prove a, pro, a, a, a you know, a, a way for all these makeup artists to learn without having to invest all that money and all that time because I knew they don't have all that money and all that time, right? So that was the reason behind my business plan, but the commission just didn't see that. So I had to fight them back and forth on how my program is so, ex it's like accelerated makeup and business program, which I wanted to learn, teach them about makeup, but I also wanted to teach them about how to be a business owner, which no one teaches. Yeah. No one teaches that. And that was something that I really think that uh, distinguish, distinguishes me and sets me apart from other schools. So um, what's, what's uh, let's let's talk about Damn. that. I mean, yeah, that was, that was <laughs> Those breaks. Those breaks need to be oiled. So uh, you teach now, how, how long are your programs? My program is 40 hours, so six days. 
six days and then uh, but it's very it's, accelerated it's, is it like they can do they can do kind of a, is it a hybrid where um it's a hybrid yeah between um practical hands-on and between theory um and i also have an online course which whoever signs up to my 40-hour course gets the access to my online business course for makeup artists as well um so i made sure to add really a lot of value so they don't only learn in those 40 hours they can keep on learning throughout like they have the access for the next 12 months to the online course so it's a it's a hybrid of both or all three things i guess but i really focus on hands-on because i've noticed that makeup artists need a hands-on education sure. a lot of them have done online they've learned for youtube they've learned maybe online courses but they need the hands-on to really be able to to be to be confident to apply makeup on someone else Especially because I teach them about different skin types, skin tones, about different ethnicities, backgrounds, uh, skin types. So it's really important for them to really get that hands-on knowledge that they need. So that was my idea behind my business. And again, I, I feel like, and a lot of people, like a crazy amount of people tell me, they go to all these other schools and do the consultation with them and they come back to me like, I really love your program. I really love the way how you have everything established and how I don't have to spend so much money uh, out of pocket. Um, so I can get educated and get certified in the makeup field, right? And that feedback really enforces me and I'm very big on improving my content, improving my, my program off of feedback that I hear from others. Um, and that's that's very important for a business owner to be able to pivot and be able to change things as you get feedback from your customers because your customer is your boss. And you know how some people say like, oh, I'm the boss, I make my own schedule. Do you, do you pay yourself your own salary? No, you're students or clients whoever pays your salary right Correct. so you have to you have to be there for them and that's something I learned from my mom never say no client is always right and I stand by that that's so true and in America mentality is client is not always right mm -hmm. you know and I always learned that like they are right not always obviously there is some people you tell them they're you, right even you if have they're not to right. make them happy right you have to make them happy because you that's have what they're to paying you for they come they out of happy. your your way to make them make them happy in, in any unless, way satisfied. unless you advertise yourself as a uh, you know as a uh, makeup artist academy with a stick where they just shut up and you tell them what to do exactly there, there's like the other school as well there are people who are doing that the hard way yes. more, and people who are kind of they're seeing like how it's changed because uh, I think people became very like way weaker yes. than it was before so people exactly. so business owners who are way tougher and rougher uh, off stage yes. than they are on camera and when, when you look at their like interviews for example with you it's all beautiful but I guess uh, when you're at work you're like a lioness yes jumping. I am a lion I'm a, I'm a Leo actually in horoscope so there funny. you go there you <laughs> yes. go and you know and that's something like I've learned like with my parents as well giving me those lessons but also learning through business too like you really have to be there for I just ran a red light. You have to be there for your clients. You have to be there for, for because not everyone is the same. People will need different things. They will want different things. They will want different way of teaching. They might, you know, they're used to different ways. That's why I focus on short affordable, but also small groups. So I can really grab my, my student's hand if I need to and really show them how to do something, like and how at, to blend, you know? At what stage they come to you? They're super beginners. Okay. Like they haven't, some of them haven't touched the brush in their life. They don't even know the difference between a primer and a foundation, for example. Some of them have a little more knowledge, usually from I, I don't know that either, but I can assume. I was watching the video, so I wanted, I'm, I'm like, what's the thing with all of that? Like, I, I only, my, I, as you can see, my, my skin is oh, probably by default, maybe not that bad for the like Vegas weather. Yeah, mine is super bad from sanitizer because I sanitize my hands 10,000 times a day. Okay. So yeah, mine is super bad. Okay, so uh, let's talk about uh, probably women are the best target for what you're saying in terms of what you're preaching as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, t tell me more about like what's what's makeup? Why why do you need the makeup? Is it just uh, the aesthetic side or? It's or, both. It's or also confidence. Medical. It's a confidence. So and psychological, aesthetic. psychological, Aesthetics. and aesthetic. Yes, exactly. Uh, is it medical as well? Because it um, keeps you, or not, mean, not that much. Medical would be more like skincare. Probably would be more on that medical side and treatments um, to really keep your skin nice and beautiful. Not just when you have makeup. And actually, a part of the makeup is how you do your skincare and skin prep and how your skincare routine is as well. Gotcha. So that really determines. But also makeup for me, I don't do makeup in a way to change someone's face or someone's features. I like to emphasize their beauty. 
And when I have my client in my chair, when she tells me uh, how beautiful she feels, it's not that the makeup is beautiful, but she is beautiful with makeup She's, on. She's uh, recognizing exactly. herself. And I believe that women have like an alter ego when we do makeup, when we put makeup on, put our, you know, our clothes, hair, heels, you bring a different person out. And it's, it's true. I, I felt that on myself and I see other people, I see my models in my academy as well when they come to me and then, you know, when they do the makeup, they, they feel they walk differently after that. So you're kind of you giving know? them not only the skill set, but it's kind of like a product of of all of that, yes. the transformation is yep, what exactly. they're going to do with that and what actions they're exactly. going to take afterwards. Yep, exactly. You know, it's it's amazing when you see that in a woman, when she brings out the best of herself. You know, we have a lot of mental, I wouldn't say problems or issues, but a lot of people maybe don't have the confidence. Maybe they think of themselves bad. I have such beautiful people in my life that they talk bad about themselves. Like, oh, I'm so fat. Oh, I this or that. Like, you're so beautiful. Everyone's so beautiful in their own way. But when you can emphasize that and bring that out, out of them, with makeup, we're just applying pigments to someone's skin. It's crazy. It's a crazy amount of transformation, like you said, and it's and it's just brings the best so you out make, of them. Like to me, when I kind of boil that down, you make you make them love themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So when you when you go to Glam Sophisticated Makeup Academy, Nicolina will make you love yourself. <laughs> Because a lot yes. of the people, there's a problem, they don't love themselves. They so. don't love themselves enough, exactly. They don't see maybe what I see, that I'm looking at you, right? You always see the worst in yourself, and we're always the worst critics, right? We always see the, the little line that no one else notices. We always see the little, maybe pimple, or whatever it is, maybe sunspot, and yeah, no one we, else notices we wanna that. We want to see perfection. But we see those imperfections because we look at this at, at the mirror every day, every morning, right? And when someone else brings it out of you, out of you right it just like makes you feel so good it makes you feel so amazing that i don't know that's why i love makeup makeup is more than just feel uh, looking beautiful it's definitely feeling beautiful like i said getting that um that confidence out like for example every time i have a business meeting every time i have anything business related i make sure to put my makeup on obviously i'm not going i'm not talking about food line but i'm talking about that's putting what you're makeup saying. on not just because what I'm selling, because people perceive you differently too. Oh yeah, perception is care, reality. Exactly. When you take care of yourself and you show up to a business meeting with looking nice, people people know that you can take care of your business as well. If you show up looking bad, having bad You're nails, about your business. you know, not having makeup on, looking crazy, like people will not want to do business with you. Maybe they will, but they're they're gonna perceive you a different way. So that's why for me, makeup is more than just that confidence too. It's more. It's much more than that. Um, and, and I love it, you know, whoever tells me like they don't like makeup or when they say like, why do you need makeup? Like, I don't need makeup, but I love makeup. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, why like, do you need clothes? Exactly. Just go naked. Exactly, you know? So, so that's, that's why I found my niche. And like I said, I found a purpose in my life. I definitely want to help next makeup artists. The reason why too, because I was struggling. I made a lot of mistakes. I spent a lot of money. I partnered up with some really bad people. Um, waste of time and it's it's been only because it seems like you're say, saying my story but uh, the truth is that there is a kind of like a pattern yes. a blueprint for for everybody for everybody who, who you wants know to the learn, reason the reason why develop. I didn't I didn't learn much about business barely anything about business in school and it was a very basic lessons like outdated lessons right and the reason also I was the teachers in my or educators were not people working in the field so when I started doing makeup appointment or makeup uh, education I made sure my students understand that I'm still current in the field I'm still working accepting clients you're relative. doing business exactly so when you learn from me you're gonna learn the most current lessons the most current things that are happening just because I'm still in the field I'm not someone who stopped doing appointments stop doing business and now I'm just educating it in a school so that's why I wanted to do this for my students and also so they don't have to make the same mistakes I did and waste all that time and money and I remember one of the questions was about play glam about an app I had yes so that's not a whole story which I would love to talk about hopefully we'll have more time about a business that failed miserably where I lost a lot of money um, and I but I learned a lot of lessons so I always say like I don't have um, I didn't go to college here so I don't have any college debt so every mistake I made and every person who was a bad partnership was my mistake uh, was my lesson and also was my kind of like my college debt my college my college investment yeah, the right same when I started my first business just give you a quick story yes 20 I was 21 22 okay took all the 
money because I was growing up in an orphanage. So when I came to London, I didn't have anything. Maybe okay. like 500 pounds, which is 700, pretty much 700 like, dollars. dollars. Okay. And uh, after two years of working as a software developer, okay. I didn't start as a software developer. I started the construction. Okay. Within a month, I uh, found a job as a software developer. I developed quickly and uh, got promoted. And um, and then so I took all that, all those savings from two years, and I put into a par partnership, into a business. Okay. And. Um, I hired five people Same in Poland. I lost all the money because of the partner, and I'm saying because of the Same. partner, but not because of the partner. It's I paid for my lesson. It's Same. what you said. Same, literally exactly the same, the same story. Thing. Same story. Same story. I paid for the lesson, so exactly. that was the first lesson. And I, and I think, I, like uh, some of the people that I do business with, and then they, you know, I, I know we're supporting each other, you know, and then there's a very very good relationship. It's very a lot. There's a lot of trust, you know. Yes. No one is. Uh, Kind of taking advantage of, the, of each other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because then you develop those uh, you know those relationships yes but then uh, they tell me you go bust again so get ready mm -hmm. take more risk and then you you'll yes. get you go bust again so that was like the, the first one but you'll probably do another one or maybe one more mm -hmm. so get ready because there's more risk you take uh, yeah so what, what what do you think about that and tell me about the story with the yeah so that was my first business so after I graduated from uh, actually the partner I met in school so in cosmetology school we met there and I after I graduated I remember it was like summertime 2016 and I was like I have this amazing idea I want to build this app where you can kind of book like makeup hair lashes um, spray tan any like mobile service you can think of and you can book it through an app and people like there is going to be like a list of artists and you know you can choose which artists you want to work with and it's kind of like Uber for beauty, right? That was my idea behind the app. It was an amazing idea. It still is. The business idea is amazing, but the execution was wrong. So then I found a business partner and I, and I approached her. I was like, hey, do you, would you like to come, you know, half, half with me? Because I was broke. I didn't have the money to invest in an app and all that. And I found a developer who wanted to rent us an app. It was like a renting, like a very small monthly fee to rent us an app and kind of build an app for us. So I was like, okay, that's awesome. And I have to come out of pocket for like, you know, 10, 15, 20 Gs right now. I can start with like 300, $400 a month and rent an app. It was, it was a, it was a stupid concept. Anyways, I was like, okay, at least I can start with, with that, you know? So I brought her on and she invested money. We went half, half. So we kept investing, kept adding more money, kept adding more money. And then one time day she came to me, she was like, well, why don't we just buy the app? And I was like, I don't wanna, I don't have that much money. I was like, you know, why would I buy an app? I haven't proved the concept yet. I don't have customers. You know, oh. why would I go and now spend all that money? Like, let's first start small and then work our way up. No, 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 let's invest, let's buy, let's buy, let's come out. I don't even know how I came up with the money. And she made me, she made me do it. The reason why I allowed her to control me was because I wasn't confident in myself. And I thought, oh, maybe she knows better. You know, I was still an immigrant. I didn't have papers. My English was very bad. She was obviously from Vegas. She lives here. She has family here. So I was kind of trusting her, thinking like, okay, maybe she knows what she's talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. So I got into that, put a bunch of money in. 2016, 2017, March, actually around this time, 21st of March, I remember was our launch party. She made me invest $10,000 in a big gala launch party, which was such a waste of money. Mm -hmm. If I knew that now, I would never invest in a launch party. So you were investing in your lessons, basically. I was investing in my you lessons. You were paying for the lessons. Plus, we invested $15,000 in an app, plus $10,000 in that, plus a yeah. bunch of money. We were just putting it every month because we didn't have clients, obviously, the first yeah, month yeah. or two. So you have to keep putting money in. And she would make me invest money into like stuff like printing shirts and like, you know, printing stupid material that so she wasn't experienced she wasn't herself. but I wasn't too I wasn't too you know yeah, it was my yeah. first business I didn't know I was trusting her I was like okay I guess she knows what she's doing I guess you know let's put the money in. let's put the money in. I don't even know where I came out with all that money and that was literally my last dollar I was putting in that business after I paid off my school $14,000 cash right so I was just yeah. putting money in thank god I hope I don't burn I burned my I burned when I was um, so you gotta you gotta go to the shade we yeah or we can put, well, now it's not gonna be fun to put the shade. Um, but anyways, so I was like, okay, you know, I'll figure I'll figure it something out. So anyways, we have the launch party in May, or no, March 21st, big all the party, right? And the app, we didn't even launch the app. The same day we had the party was when the uh, app went live on Apple. And you know how sometimes it takes a couple of days yeah, for yeah, it yeah. to show? And we were, the whole point of it is whoever comes, they're gonna get a little goodie bag unless they download the app. They have to download the app. People couldn't find the app on the app store. It was such a mess. It was such a waste of time. People we partnered up with, the developers, were horrible. 
I'm gonna try to get out of this um, area. It's a lot of construction here. Yeah. Horrible, horrible people to do business with. Horrible. And we just spend money. Again, I wasn't trusting myself. I was trusting other people. I kept investing money without really knowing. Even though, you know when you have a feeling, you're like, I'm doing this wrong, but it's okay. I'm gonna do it because they want me to do it. That's how I went into the whole business. So anyways, my, it comes like maybe two months later, um, the business partner I was with started talking to me like, well, just so you know, like you're not, you know, you're not good enough for this. You don't deserve, because we were 50-50. She would tell me like, you're not good enough. You don't deserve 50-50. I know um, English better. Your, your English is bad. You don't know how to write emails. I have to do everything for you. Um, I know more people in Vegas. I can connect us with more people. Like, so I she deserve... started selling the value that she's bringing to the table. Yeah. And like, oh, you know, you deserve less money. Like, I think a uh, right way would be to go 75, 25, like 75 for her, 25 for me. I'm like, where did this came from? Like, and I put so, like all the ideas, all the artists, we had over 20 artists sign up under the app were all my friends that I used to work with before that um, as freelance makeup artists. They were all people that I brought in. So, you know, it was a lot of my ideas. Uh, she did bring a little more money into the business because her dad gave us a lot of money. So he kind of she, she kind of put a little more money so that's where the idea from her was like well you know if i'm putting all this money in then i need to 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 have more money and i'm like well before you put the money in you never mentioned this how come you're mentioning it now so then she started talking uh, you know kind of talking bad about me i guess to me i still have all those messages saved i still have every single message saved every time i feel like you know low or like no, I'm not good enough or something. I always go back to Discovered. those messages and I'm always like, you see now. And what really like made me mad was when she said like, everything you have done for the business, I ho I could have just Googled. That's what she told me. She was like, everything you did was just, it was Googleable. Like it wasn't a skill that you really brought on. Like there was no value that you really brought on, right? So I was like, you'll see, I'm gonna, you'll see. You know what I mean? So there's a lesson with partnership. So then I realized that I'm not, this is not worth it. And I was telling her, I was like, hey, you either buy me out or I'm gonna buy you out. Like, this is not gonna go. Like, I'm not gonna be with you, with someone like that, with that mindset, who talks so bad about me with, with, when I know the, the value I bring to the table, right? So then uh, it was June, uh, remember it was June, and I, I told her, I was like, hey, it's either or. And then finally we agreed that she's gonna pay me out, right? And she's gonna pay only half of what I invested into the app, which was $7,500. For me back then, $7,500 being so broke immigrant was like, right now, $100,000, right? Yeah. And I was like, okay, sounds good. We drafted a contract. It was her granddad who used to be a lawyer or something like that, whatever. He kind of drafted us a very vague contract, but she made me sign a non-compete, which was also a very vague part of the contract where I'm never going to open up a business like hers. But it wasn't drafted in a way. Never. Never. Like business <laughs> like hers, like an app or like a, like a kind of like a beauty agency, right? Yeah. But again, it wasn't, I can just go, right? It wasn't drafted in a sense, it didn't say where, which location, what area. It didn't say how long, for how many months or how many years. It didn't say in which radius or anything like that. It just said like no she specifics. will never, nothing, right? And then, of course, I was broke. I had to continue doing makeup. So I started doing makeup on my own. That's when actually I opened up Glam Sophisticated um, just as like a mobile beauty business, right? right? It wasn't a makeup academy yet. So that was 2017. And I opened a business. Such a similar story to work. Is it? Really? So similar, yeah. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. People like that. But they're, you know, you wouldn't be here driving this Porsche or having, I'm driving it, but you wouldn't be having this Porsche today and all this amazing business if, if it wasn't for those people, right? So they, yeah. they definitely um, have, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for every single lesson, for every single lesson that happened to me. Anyways, um, where was I? Yeah, so I opened up my Glam Sophisticated Mobile Beauty business, started doing makeup appointments. There was a client who was a part of the business that I had with her, Play Glam, and she called me because she loved my makeup. She called me to do makeup on her, and I did makeup on her. I posted on Instagram. She saw that, and she was like, well, you're breaching the, um, or that's how you contract. say, breaching the contract? Yeah. Um, because, you know, you signed a non-compete. You cannot do makeup for the rest of your life. And I was like, no, that's not a contract. Makeup is a skill. Makeup is what I know. I have to make exactly, money. Yeah. And she didn't pay me yet because she was like, I'm going to pay you in 12 monthly payment plan. She didn't have the exactly money to pay the me Exactly the same, up. like the guy, my first partner, he was like, you know, oh, uh, um, he was he was kind of, you know, trying to uh, scare me off as well uh, with like, uh, you know, he's going to send a lawyer on me and then whatever. Exactly. Uh, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to do I'm that. Gonna I'm going to do you, that. Yeah. 
So, and I didn't have the money for a lawyer. I went to small claims court, which is under $10,000, right? When you try to get from someone. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll just figure it out, I guess, whatever. And then she was like, I'm not gonna pay you. Like, for, forget about it. Like the contract is, you breach the contract, the contract ends, I'm not gonna pay you anything. And I was like, no, you're gonna pay me something. Like, you still owe me this money. Like, we're gonna end up going to court. So I, you know, I, we went to court first time. It didn't went through. I don't even know what happened. I went second time, that was 2018. Second time I went to court, filed again, paid a fee and all that to, you know, to go to court so, so I can get my money back. And it wasn't so much about the money anymore. It was about, I'm gonna prove you. You're not gonna screw me over again. You know what I mean? Right. I was so mad. I was full of hate and full of this bad energy in me that was driving me crazy. So then um, I went second time and she brought a lawyer on and I didn't have money for a lawyer, of course. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'll just, you know, I'll just go by myself. I presented my case. I was scared as hell. Like I literally, I was so scared. It was crazy. And I was like, okay, I'll just figure it out, I guess. And I went and I presented my, um, presented my, my case, and of course, guess who won? Can you guess who won? You said, of course. Of course. Yeah. So I didn't really park. I parked really bad right now. I tried to park in the. That's fine. So, of course, she won. <laughs> she won. Yeah. Of course, she won, right? And that's when I lost the money, and I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. This is the end of the story. I'm going to take an L. I'm going to move on, and I'm going to learn off of this lesson. So, that was my first business lesson, which again, I'm grateful. I paid good money for it, uh, but I'm grateful because I would never want to be in that same, with that same partner in the same business today. And guess what? Play Glam is shut down, does not exist anymore whatsoever. She continued the business, but then she shut it down in the meantime, and now I don't think, I don't I'm know. I'm glad what she that does. we that we mentioned about like uh, difficulties because most of the people talk about on the podcast talk about oh you know I did that right I did that right and then we're on our way still mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that we talked about like the difficult partnerships and then your story and then it was great to meet you as well through that yes there was probably a lot of noise but I'm uh, they will, they, will, they will hear everything. They, I hope they so. They will hear what they, what they, what they want yes, to hear. Yes, exactly. So uh, now you're teaching. It's a, a glam, sophisticated academy. Yes. Do you uh, want to just stop for a second, go grab the SPF and then continue? I literally... We're not going to have enough battery. So we're we not going to have... We got to okay. like, uh, finish. I just wanted here. to get some SPF because I'm burning right now. But it's okay. We can Ve finish Vegas. it Vegas. So That's we'll, okay. We'll just finish off. So. <laughs> I feel like I'm like my forehead is burning right now. <laughs> no, no. It's, you know, like you get a little bit like little red. But yeah. it's actually brown. Because I it's burned... Brownish. I was um, hiking the other day on Red Rock and I burned like three, four days ago on Sunday. Yeah. So that's why now it's already getting more red. So, but it's so okay. let, uh, just yeah, let's, 30 seconds. Yeah. So, yeah, um, okay, Nicolina, thanks for uh, sharing your story. This one is uh, dead already. Okay, so we have let, this one. We have this one, yes, <laughs> which we need this one only. Okay. Nicolina, thanks for sharing your story. And uh, if people want to go, and they're in Vegas or, or, or they're coming to Vegas and mm -hmm. they want to connect with you, where do they go to find you? So they can find me on glamsophisticated.com, my website. Um, if you just type in Glam Sophisticated Makeup Academy to we'll Google. We'll link that in as well. Yes, you can also find me there as well. Or you can find me on Instagram. Glam Sophisticated is my business page. Or Nicolina underscore beauty. Nicolina with a K. So N-I-K-O-L-I-N-A underscore beauty. Um, that's where my personal Instagram is and where I usually talk to people through my DMs a lot. And then also if you want to, you know, put my email and all that you can put it underneath as well we'll put whatever yes. info you you want yes. you want us to put thank you very much for thank your time you. it was a pleasure you. this was amazing seriously this was amazing i i hope that this podcast and this whole idea really grows and it really brings some amazing people to your podcast because i love this concept one of the things that i love is actually meeting people like you i would n probably it would be like you know not doable most of the time for majority of the people to like to meet fr from like even makeup space mm -hmm. or something that I don't understand at all. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that th that's something that I've learned in business. You cannot be so like you need to be focused. Yes. But you need to go outside the box and you need to talk Always. to connect with people Always. Who, who who are doing logistics. They're exactly. good at uh, financials. They're good exactly. at stuff that you're not good at. Exactly. It's so important to diver diversify yourself in that way. Obviously, in the beginning, you have to learn a lot of things yourself. How to open up an LLC. How to track your expenses, how to um, file your taxes, right? You have to, to learn those things, some marketing. how to do marketing, how to uh, create content, how to edit. Like you're going to be one man show for probably yeah. first couple of years. But then when you learn those lessons, then it's time to outsource and find people. A lot of people are afraid of outsourcing and they think it's a waste of money. Actually, it's a waste of money if you're the one doing everything and trying to scared, figure everything out. 
because everything you have to learn, right? So it's actually, when you get to that point, it's very important to learn how to outsource, hire proper people for your team and build a team because you cannot do it yourself. And you it, cannot make a million dollars with just one person. And it, and it forces you to actually get up and then freaking hustle because if exactly. you're on your own, you're like, oh, it's comfortable. Exactly. I got that, I got that 10K check. I got yep. that 20K check. You yep. know, it's good. Especially when it's you have good. overhead It's all good. Too. I have so much profit yep. and it's nothing. You're, you're yep. not building anything. You're, not you're building just anything. on your own. You're just staying in one spot. If you really want to grow, there obviously there is to be overhead. You know, if you don't have the overhead, it's hard to grow. It's hard to scale a business. And it's also hard to do it, like I said, if you're by yourself. You have to have a good team behind that. So that's what I'm working on this year. I'm really building a proper team when it comes to marketing. You met Sergio. So I hope that the podcast will help you as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's why I'm so excited about this. I'm excited about sharing my story because it's been a while since I shared my story. And it's been a while since I went like so deep, like personal like this, being vulnerable. Vulnerable. Vulnerable, yeah. <laughs> it's a tongue twister for me. We're um, Eastern European, Eastern so we Europeans. can make mistakes. Yes, we have the strong R. So, you know, and it's it's amazing. That's why I'm excited to share this episode and as well help you too. One, one, one. It's crazy. Um, awesome. So let's get some SPF and then we can maybe shoot some some cool pictures, huh? Go awesome. to to one of the rooftops in maybe Bellagio or something like that and shoot some cool pictures. Awesome. Yeah, if we have okay. enough time, then yeah, uh, I do. Let's, if you have time, I have just a little bit, so okay. We gotta, or we can maybe we even do it here. Speed up. So let's see what, what we got here and uh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. All the best. Take care.